He's a Bloomington favorite, a former Indiana Mr. Basketball, and an avid real estate agent at that. It was Anthony Leal who put up a career night. The senior guard hasn't seen much playing time in his four-year career, but he has stayed ready for his one moment, his game, to truly shine. A much-needed break now begins for the Hoosiers as they wait for Santa to come into town. Indiana will take just a little over a week off after they have played three games in the span of six days. With this victory and a little help from the rest of the league, Indiana has moved all the way up to the sixth seed at the Big Ten Tournament. Yeah, you heard me correctly, the sixth seed. This team was as low as 12 just mere weeks ago, and they have just risen all the way up and are in prime position to make a deep run in the Big Ten Tournament. Now, is Mike Woodson and company really concerned about a deep run at this current point? Listen, we're playing as good as any team in the country right now based on how we played these last four games. But we got we to gotta take it a game at a time, man. It was three. <laughs> after three. <laughs> after three. With the seconds ticking away and IU down by two, it was a freshman taking the biggest shot of the game. The freshman was Gabe Cups. Boilermaker fans were gifted not just with a Purdue victory, but free chicken sandwiches on top of Zach Eady's first career three-pointer. Booze in the first half. Cheers in the second. How's it hanging Hoosier fans? I'm Hayden Smith and welcome back to another edition of the Hoosier Report brought to you by the Hoosier Network. Now, Bloomington is all a buzz about Kendall Jenner being in town, but there's also plenty to be excited about in IU athletics. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, I think the obvious answer would be somebody like Mackenzie Mbako or Khalil Ware, but I'm going to go in a different direction and say Anthony Walker because I Ooh, really enjoyed his game against UND. Granted, it's an exhibition game. You're going to expect some other guys to produce a little bit more than they're probably going to produce in the regular season. But he was a key glue guy for Miami's Final Four run last year, and I think he could provide a very similar situation with the Indiana Hoosiers this season. I loved his defense, and I think that will go a long way this season. Indiana's conference record in the regular season. What do you guys got? It's, uh, you're, you're exactly right. It's a shot in the dark because yeah. all we've seen from Indiana is one exhibition game. And like you said, there's just so much roster turnover that there's too many questions and you don't know what you're going to get from this group. So based off of that fact alone, I think Indiana is going to be lucky to get around 10 games that they win in the Big Ten Conference. It's going to be really close for them. And I, I, I don't know, the Big Ten, it, it's kind of a down year this year for the Big Ten, but you've got stack competition up top with Michigan State and Purdue. But before we get started with anything, a little icebreaker. I want you guys to tell me, what's your favorite candy? What superpower would you have and why would you pick that? That is yeah. mine. Uh, yeah, Gosling has to. I don't think I look like him. You he can does. be the judge of that. But that even that angle, he look, you look like him. <laughs> yeah, like, right there. <laughs> Give me your all's favorite holiday and why. Who is your favorite basketball player of all time? Uh, I'm going to go last because... I'm the host, and uh, I get to make, <laughs> make the rules. All right, here makes the rules, everybody. <laughs> okay, if we want to really talk about who's making the rules, but the players to watch, no, 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 back no, me no, up, no, Thomas. No, no, no. It's a zombie apocalypse right oh now. Everybody in Bloomington <laughs> has turned into a zombie. Where do you hide in Bloomington? If you had your own TV show, who would play you? Oh, What's happening? Here's the prop. Get my oh, there it is. Santa hat out. I mean, it might as well be Christmas time already late. What? We have a lot of conversations. Is your favorite sit down restaurant appetizer? If you could go back in time and change one big mistake that your sports team made, either during a game or during a season, your favorite sports team, what would it be and why? Um, we didn't really mention this him a whole lot fair. last podcast. I wasn't going to add him. 
Was Malik Renew? I'm gonna stand by that. We're gonna go. I'm going out and get the Renew Burger tonight. What is a bucket list place that you want to visit before you die? Give me your all-time favorite Indiana Hoosier that you have watched. Give me your top three favorite movies of all time. So I want to get your all's favorite chocolate type of candy. It doesn't just have to be straight up chocolate. It can have chocolate in it. So like Reese's or, or, or Twix, anything like that. What did you want to be whenever you grew up? I mean, mm. Interstellar for me is easily a, a, a top 10 movie of all time. Yeah. I need to watch it. My sister gets on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you that have right seen there. I can see that shot right there. Who is your number one artist in your music library at this current point? <laughs> if you were a dog, what breed would you be? <laughs> Back underway, 64-54 UConn, they have the ball. Caravan at the top of the heat, guarded by Cunningham. The handoff to Spencer, he'll go right. Finds Johnson. Back to Caravan on the left wing. Caravan harassed by Cunningham. The handoff to Spencer again. Now he'll go right. Ten on the shot clock. He drives inside all the way. Blocked away. It's picked up by Mitchell. Texas comes back the other direction. Mitchell has it himself. Stops at the left wing and looks to set up the offense with Cunningham. It'll be Horton driving inside, and he's going to be fouled going up for the shot. So two free throws coming for Ethel Horton. A foul will go against Samson Johnson. That is now Johnson's second personal. And if you're Texas, if you're going to try to come back into this game, you have to knock down free throws. So far, they've done a good job of that, 81% from the line. They have to continue to hit free throws, and now they have to get stops on the defensive end because UConn's offense has started going here in the second. Horton goes one for two, so splits a pair. It's a nine-point ball game with 10 minutes to go. Tristan Newton across the timeline. He'll set up the offense. They go to Johnson, now ball on the left wing. Ball guarded by Hunter. Back to Newton at the top of the key. He's looking to go right, now goes left, crosses over, drives inside, kicks it back out. It's Caravan driving into the paint, goes up with the left hand, couldn't get to go, tapped around by Johnson, and Hunter of Texas picks it up. Here come the Longhorns. A. Smith stops, and he'll slow it down. A. Smith going right, finds Hunter on the far side. Hunter to Horton at the top of the key. He's going to attack, break it off, fires a mid-range jumper, no good, short. Head coach Rodney Terry throws his hands up. Wondering what the shot was. Caravan to Newton on the right side. Now he'll drive to the left, receives a screen by Johnson. Kicks it out, Caravan right wing three. Got it! Alex Caravan once again. 14 points and four threes. 12 point ball game. Mitchell the handoff to Ace Miss. It's taken away. Here comes Ciara, throws up the lob upstairs. Samson Johnson again. MSG is on its feet. Hunter finds Mitchell on the far side. The handoff back to Hunter. He'll drive to his right, stops on a dime, kicks it outside. Mitchell sizes it up, drives inside on his left. Throws it up with the left hand, couldn't get it short. Rebound to the Huskies, it's Newton coming up the right side. 69-55, eight and a half. Johnson at the top of the key, guarded by Onyema. Diara driving left, throws up the shot, couldn't get it. The rebound to Caravan, it stays with UConn. Finds it the ball on the right wing, driving inside. Throws up the lob, nobody there, it's taken away by Texas. Hunter driving, looking to go up with the right hand and lays it up and in. 69-57, eight to go. That is a big time stop and score for Texas. That was the largest lead of the game for UConn at 14 points, now 12. Hassan Diara on the left wing. He'll break it off to the right. They're gonna work it around the perimeter and finally find Newton on the left side. Newton guarded by A. Smith. Caravan, another three. No good, strong. And it was tipped out, it stays with UConn. 12 point lead for the Huskies, 7.42 and UConn. They're starting to taste victory in Madison Square Garden. They look to go undefeated here in the Empire Classic. Indiana looking to retake possession on the left side. McDonald bumping with Matthew Fisher on the far side. A little bit of a different kind of football action on the pitch between both of these teams. It will, however, be a free kick for the Wolverines. 
Just under four minutes to play here in the first half of action. Score sits at two to one in favor of the Indiana Hoosiers. Goldson, he's looking for Wagner up the field. And he's not able to find any of his teammates. It goes up the field, Sarver, he's streaking up the left side. Now stops on a dime. Looking to cross it inside, he does, wide open. Nobody's able to take a shot, and it's nearly cleared out by Michigan, but only to Brett Beebe. Hoosiers continue to be on the attack. Now Mahalik on the right side, plays it back to Bakarak. He's got some space to work with, tries to get it over to the left side, and he does with Borger. Now back to Sarver, equal with the 18-yard box, crosses it inside, looking for his teammate Tommy Mahalik, but sails it over his head. A goal kick for the Wolverines. Nate Ward will check into the game for Indiana. And another just golden opportunity for Indiana to try and double the lead to two there. Sarver's cut back, placed perfectly, and it looked like McDonald just gets a touch that he tries to take it with on his right foot. A little too heavy on that ball. One of those where honestly you feel like maybe trying to take it first time might have been the better option, but McDonald a little more comfortable with his left foot, maybe not so confident trying to take that strike, and in the end goes right to the goalkeeper. Freshman Isaiah Goldson will take the goal kick. Also recently named to the All Big Ten freshman team as he got that starting spot after that game against Creighton in early September. And he's been the solidified starter ever since. Couple headers right at midfield between both teams. Michigan looking to keep it and they do and they'll send it over to the near side with Baker. Playing around with Malungumbale and they'll get it back to Alznawe. Under two to go. Hoosier still up two to one. Michigan's trying to push it up the field but Indiana says no sir. And they'll keep it back to JT Harms and goal. Miller will send a long through ball up the field to Indiana. And then Michigan boots it right back to JT Harms and he'll collect that one right at the top of the 18. Minute 20 to go. Indiana looking to get out of the first half with the two to one lead. They're looking for Sam Sarver once again up the field, not able to corral it. But there's McDonald to keep it and they'll play over to Barger on the left side. He's looking for McDonald, nearly one finds him. It was tipped minute. out, and it'll be a throw in for Indiana. They'll play it quick with Sam Sarver. Under a minute to go in the first half. Sarver going right to the end line, falls to the ground. A foul is called on Michigan. Hayden, it sure <laughs> feels like Sam Sarver is the most fouled player in the Big Ten. It certainly looks certainly like it. it. I could <laughs> certainly see it. As fast as he is and as aggressive as he is on the offensive end, I wouldn't doubt it. 30 seconds remain. Sarver will take the free kick, raises the right arm, swings it into the box. It was headed around, hits the side of the goalpost, and it's kicked all the way back outside. It looks like another foul is called on Michigan as Nate Ward went crashing on the ground with 12 seconds to go. Indiana's looking to go quick, under 10 to go. And they'll stop the clock at seven seconds. And you can get a chance at goal from here. 100%. 23, 24 yards out, maybe. Michigan players huddled up at the top of the 18. The smallest of windows for Indiana with seven seconds. Sarver will take the shot. Saved by Goldson. <laughs> And he gets his chance and equalizes Hoosiers up three to one. An exclamation point, Hayden, from Indiana. Free kick situation, a great shot initially from Sam Sarver, who's on target, well saved by Golson, but cannot claim it. And in the end falls, there's three Hoosiers in the area. Anybody could take it, whoever wants it. And in the end, it's, it's a man who's suffered the agony on the attacking front who gets the goal. That will do it for nothing short of an exciting first half of action. Four goals combined between both teams, but it's Indiana 
with the three to one lead over the Michigan Wolverines here in the Big Ten Tournament semifinal round.